everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode three of Heroines of the Cherry Blossom, and the date is December 11th, 2015. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, welcome here. Uh, this is a very safe Otome zone, so feel free to have fun, enjoy, and speak as you wish. I am Pizza Maid, the head maid in charge here, and along with me, I have my lovely co-host, the best sushi of all time, Sushi Geisha. Hi, Sushi. Hey. Hey, Pizza. Hey, chat. Uh, we are so excited to be here, guys. We have had nothing but absolute fun these last few weeks, and we are so excited to join you back for another one. Uh, we have tons of topics to uh, explain and, and discuss here this week. Uh, we had a lot of great suggestions and input and feedback come in from you guys, the fans, the viewers, so we definitely wanted to address a couple of these things. But like we've started every show, I do want to start off by just asking you, Sushi, what are you playing this week? Well, this week was a little slow for me. We had um, a possible, our, our cat was under the weather, but we found out today she's fine, so yay. Mm -hmm. But um, I was playing some Persona 4, dancing all night, um, just because I love Persona, and that always makes me feel a little bit happy. Mm -hmm. um, and I finally finished Amnesia. <laughs> finally. Thank you. I'm proud of you, because I haven't even finished it yet. Nicely done. I don't have 100% trophies because those guys are douchebags when it comes to the mini games, and they can go suck it. But um, I have all of the Indians, good, bad, normal, and Yuki, you, what, what's, what's his name? Uh, Ukyo. Ukyo, thank mm -hmm. you. He has seven different bad Indians and one good and one normal. Oh, God. Did you do it with a walkthrough, or did you just do it on a complete I did the run? bad Indians with the walkthrough. Really? <laughs> I like, I'm, I'm, I want to move on, so I'm going to, like, plow through that. <sighs> um, so, yeah, I, I was so happy to finish it. What was interesting is Toma shows up in one of his bad endings with the same issue. Wait, what do you mean by the same issue? The protective issue. Oh. Yeah, and it's 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 scary. Like there was blood there. I'm going to say that. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Shit it gets was... real when you throw blood into it. I'm just saying. In Otome's blood is a very isn't all I mean, that common. It was in Hakuoki a little bit, but that kind of went with the story. It's, it's war. It was combat-based for that reason, though. Yeah. But in Amnesia, it, it really caught me off guard. And I was like, oh, shit. And um, I won't go into it maybe right now, maybe a little bit later, but I'm Team Toma now. So... Judge me. Judge I'm me. never going to judge you because you are my hetero life mate and I adore you. <laughs> but I do shake my head in shame. I understand. I, I don't I don't find that outrageous at all. Um, I totally understand that. Um, but I guess I, I'll go into that a little bit more later. But um, And then I ordered, like, if you guys have listened to our uh, first podcast... We talked about a game that, you know, what was one of the games that you wanted to play? And I talked about Clap, K-L-A-P, Kind, Love, and Punish. And to spoil myself for Christmas, I bought the game and I got the limited edition. And it should be here next week. Yay! And I just found out on Twitter that it's, uh, well, I don't know. It may not be because it's a Japanese game. Damn it. I got all excited thinking it was um, PlayStation TV compatible, but I don't think it will be. Mm. Okay. But I'll test it. I'll be happy to test that. Um, yay, Corey. I know, right? Clap. Yay. <laughs> Whipping boys. Who who doesn't want that? So um, I'll let you know how it goes. We'll I'll talk about it next week probably. So Can, can you text me CGs? Is there any way you can... Privately text yes. ACGs. That's I'm, all I I'm ask. Worried, 
I'm worried because it is in Japanese and I do not know any Japanese, but um, I think it was Corgi on Twitter who told me it's not as bad as sweet school life. Mm. So I, and I have a guide already that tells me what's happening in the story. So um, I think it'll be fine. Is it, is it the guide from, is it Breadmaster Lee that gave you the guide? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I highly suggest that's, oh man, her guides are amazing. Or his guides? Their guides are amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So, but, so what have you been up to? So I finished Shin's route. Uh, Blind Run got good ending, which is really surprising. But it helped so much because it gave me a more fluid understanding of the actual story. And I feel a little upset at myself because I wish I had started with his route first. I think it would have given me a little more a clear and concise direction as to how I wanted to tackle the other routes. But it is what it is. It's whatever choice you make. So I, I definitely finished his route. Um, I need to finish Icky. I need to finish Toma. I'm actually just going to run those through on guides just to kind of speed it up. And then I'm actually going to take Kent's run as a blind run. I want to unlock those so I can be able to start Ukyo because you got me so excited about Ukyo. I was like, whoa, what am I missing? And <laughs> I, I remember us discussing just, you know, how low of a probability it was to get a good ending because of how many bad endings are available on him. So I was a little apprehensive, but I'm like, I got to try it. I got to try it. I need to complete this game. So uh, I'll be working on that at some point this weekend. But since I was, uh, I've been borrowing Simodian's PS Vita, I picked up Code Realize. Yeah. <laughs> I I will say I am absolutely in love with this game. Just from the prologue alone, if anybody knows me, I'm a huge Tuxedo Mask fan. Huge, yes. massive Tuxedo Mask. And the way, again, this is going to be um, without spoilers. I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone. Um, just the way that the story starts out, though, it definitely pays homage and tribute to Tuxedo Common. So when really? I saw those, when I saw those moments, I went. Oh, Oh my God. Oh my God. And I got so excited. Um, I will say this though. If you are going into the game with the hopes of starting uh, Arsene Lupin, uh, or Lupin, Lupin, Lopin, I forget. He is not the first person. You actually have to unlock all four other routes, which is what I learned today. So I actually started with uh, Van Helsing, Abraham Van Helsing. Right. I'm very excited. He, I chose him because he was first in the list of available choices, Mm -hmm. I think unconsciously he is the typical route that I would go for most guys. And we'll discuss that later on in the show, but I did start on him. He's growing on me. He has this very cold hearted glare to him. Heavy on the machinery has this, uh, dumbbell gun thing that's going on for him. I'm actually really excited. And I've been so absorbed into the storyline. I absolutely love it. It's such a refreshing pace from what I've been playing these last few weeks between the Men of Yoshiwara, Scarlet Fate, as well as, uh, uh, Amnesia. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, aside from that though, I haven't even gone into Final Fantasy 14 in some time. It's very yeah. unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, so I'm extremely excited about it. Uh, not much else I've been playing. This week has been a really long week for me. This is, this is my final week of work before I go on a two-and-a-half-week paid vacation for the holidays. So I've been trying to take care of all these things because next week we're only in the office for two days and then uh-huh. done for the year. So it was very awesome. busy. Yeah, but uh, I was definitely excited about that. And, uh, yeah. So that's what I've been playing. Uh, Definitely, you guys, also let us know on social media what you've been playing. I actually saw a couple of people playing Code Realize this week, along with a couple other games. And I was like, I didn't even know that this existed. I didn't know that this came out. (laughs) Maybe I'll check them out. And they've been a lot of mobile ultimates. A lot of mobile ultimates have been updating recently. I'm like, they know it's Christmas time. They know they can get our money because they know they're getting iTunes gift cards for Christmas. Right. (laughs) I'm convinced (laughs) of them. Exactly. Between Voltage and Shall We Date Alone, they've just been putting out all this new stuff. And I'm like, yeah, they know what they're doing. They're marketing this right. So we'll discuss that in the news and announcements as well. But 
one of the topics I did want to discuss because it was uh, brought to my attention earlier this week on Twitter was how do you know what your dream ultimate guy is? I had to sit and think about that. That's tough. It's true. It's true. And when you have a specific archetype of a guy that you do go for, and I will be clear and frank in saying that in a myriad of different ultimate games, there are very strong, you know, clear, romanceable guys and archetypes that you go for. And a lot of them are very stereotypical. It's hard to say that you can go for one specific one. Like I had to sit back and think about all the ultimate games I played. I'm like, which guy did I choose first here? Which one did I like the most in this one? So I had to actually sit and write down all the ultimates I played, whether they be mobile or a triple A yeah. title to make sense of it. Or even if it was a, a Dojin uh, ultimate, I was like, which one do, which one did I go for? And I'm like, okay. And then I actually figured it out. I'm actually curious as to what yours is. Um, okay, so I did the same thing. And I think you know this because I texted you and I was like, okay, according to my calculations. <laughs> and you were like, you're what? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I've been playing too much amnesia with Kent, like just way too much for this. Um, so I did the same thing. I made a list of my favorite guys and... Um, kind of group them based upon personality and kind of all over the place, which is nice. But as if I'm brutally honest, which I never want to be about this, Mm -hmm. um, apparently I like the ones that are good looking and very, very rude to me (laughs) and hate me. (laughs) Um, So Kuso and Scarlet Fate. Um, his story isn't even that great. At one point I was playing it and I was like, God, this story is so slow, but the CGs are hot. So, you know, I'm fine. Um, and then, yeah, me too, Corgi. Me too. So like in, um, Hakuoki, my favorite is Sano, but my secret favorite is the biggest one in the game like the biggest um sunder sunder sundir sundir in the game Uh uh-huh do you know who i'm talking about i think i do i'm just curious is it not the fearless leader right no 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 No. we talked about this toshi is more like a a a leader like a, a trusted friend you know, like someone you look up to that is harsh, but he always still kind of looked out um, for you in his own way. You know what I mean? It, is it is it my favorite one? No. Okay. I didn't think it was like that. It's like, the oh. bad guy. Oh, wait. Before or after? Oh, wait. I can say this, right? Before yeah. or after he turned? No, wait. No, you're thinking of someone else. So okay. it's Kazuma. Oh, oh shit. I forgot that you could even play that route. Yeah, yeah. And you really should. You really should. Um. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wait. Oh, yeah. I should go play that again. It's been a while. Um, I don't admit that that's one of my favorites just because, I don't know. I mean, it's a good route, but he is, I I don't know. Um, But he's like my secret from that game. And then lately, um, thanks to Amnesia, I found out that I am um, into the crazy ones. Very, very, very crazy ones. I don't think, though, that Toma is regarded as... Okay. I agree that Toma is crazy in just my own personal perspective and my own opinion. But I think the overall spectrum of Toma is that he's supposed to be the protector. He's the... He's the I'll provide for you. I'll take care of you kind of type. I don't think he's considered the crazy one until you get a bad route. <laughs> no, I mean, even in the good route, he goes nuts on you. <laughs> I'll have to see how, because I did not get the good route for Toma. And I'm sure I'm still not going to like him, but we'll but see. see. That, that's the struggle is like what I think I like um, is like 
like, you know, the, the cheerful one, like the happy go lucky, you know, um, everything's safe. They're kind of flirty, but they're not too pushy. Mm -hmm. But, um, apparently I, that's not what I end up like going for as my favorites. Like I, it's just funny. Cause like, I literally counted it all out and it was very clear that I like rude, hot 2d guys. And it's kind of sad. And I feel the need to say this. I feel specifically this evening alone, I need to say this. This is not reflected on our own personal relationships in our right. life. They're, yeah. It's entirely different of what we play as to the people that we do choose to be with in our life. This does not mean that the people that we are with in our life are this way. No. I think it's just what we seem to gravitate towards when playing the game. It could be based off appearance. It could just be based on dialogue and you know the chemistry that you create with that person I need to put that out there I gotta say yes, that especially you. tonight yeah yeah so so I sat there thinking to myself okay why why do I think I like this um kind of thing and um it's one of those that gives me the most like emotional feeling in a way because when they um when they come around and they're like, because <laughs> I just tried not to look at that. I'm going to keep this professional. So when, when they come around and they've been, they've been rude and they start to reveal little things, that's what tugs at my heartstrings is mm -hmm. when they have this very serious exterior. And then you see that they have this human side and that they really do care about someone other than themselves. That kind of is what gets me. Mm -hmm. I think so it's seeing their emotional change in that way. Like to me, the cheery guy is always cheery. Mm -hmm. So I don't, it, there is something there, but for me, I guess I see a lot of growth in that character when they, you know, I, I don't know, just make that 180, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and when they fall for you, they seem to fall, like, so hard. And you know that they will, like, go to bat for you. Like, they, there's no question because you've made it past that, that barrier that they've had up to separate themselves. That you, It just seems like, from the ones I can remember, it seems like, you know, they will do whatever it takes to, you know, make you happy, go get you some ice cream, whatever. <laughs> Whatever you need, you know. Saito got me a ninja princess. If know. Saito got me ice cream, I would have put a ring on it. I would have been all about that. Like, Thank you, Saito. <laughs> no, but I agree. I agree because I've also noticed this as well. And you and me are very similar in the types that we do go for. I'm very much the same way. The strong, silent types. A little cold at first and a little rude to me. I've also noticed, again, when they do make that complete 180, they are so invested into it. There's also a level of maturity that you see in those strong, silent types that I can't find in a couple of the other routes that I do play. Yeah, and I true. think that I like that. And I don't know if this is due to my own age or due to my own past experience. I don't know what the case is, but I like that it's very safe. It's very comforting to have somebody who's level-headed, very cool and composed. And that's what I enjoy about it. Yeah, I never, ever go after the childhood friend that looks like they're 12. Like that really, I just, I've seen that in a lot of mobile games and I'm just like, that does, I, I want to feel like an equal, I guess. And it's not mm. the fact that we've been friends for so long. It just seems when they illustrate them that they are like still, I don't know, childlike. And I guess that is what maybe the main character is. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, and this is another topic for another day, but I see the main character as myself, someone I can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing a younger looking guy in an Atomi game just is kind of like, I'm just, I usually save that route for last. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think that's, a, I think that's normal. I think that's very natural. I can't go for the younger types because just in my personal preferences alone, I can't 
be with someone younger than me. That's actually very yeah. off-putting for me as a female where I'm like, I need to date somebody either my age or older. So I don't think I can play games and, and romance someone younger than me. It's to, you know, the hand that rocks the cradle kind of business. And I'm like, no, I'm not okay with that. So Corgi asked, what about really old guys? Like, if we're talking like vampire old guys, then sure. But like, you know, we've been alive for thousands of years and you're secretly a vampire and a demon too and we're all hot and stuff. But uh, I, I personally in my own life have dated men up to 11 years older than me and I've been perfectly fine with it. It's actually very comfortable in Otome's though. And I, I mean, I guess Toshi and Chizuru and Hakuoki is a great example when you actually do the math of the ages between the two of them. That route didn't seem real to me. I guess that mm -hmm. makes sense. I respect the route and I think that it was an amazing romanceable route, but it wasn't one that resonated with me personally. It's right. one that I can appreciate for what it's what's there, but it's not one that I felt was just realistic. It just didn't tie with me the way it did with others. And I know there are people who are diehard Toshi fans. They're like, oh my God, Toshi. And I love Toshi. And the anime <laughs> adaptations show it as well, of course. And we'll discuss that for another day. But I think I think it's just a matter of preference. It's it's funny because for myself, I'm actually more accustomed towards going the athletic types I seem to love the men who are passionate about something else and something athletic <laughs> watching a man wield a bamboo sword is the best thing ever and, right. and so Corgi says that there's actually a game that has a grandpa in it that is 60 years old and I will tell you I, I would not do that route I would tell you that right now. That That's my gut reaction. My gut reaction is that. I would give it a fair assessment. I would try it out. Do I think I would like it? I don't know. But I'd be willing to try it out just to see because there's something. There is something about being with an older man that gives a sense of protection. I don't know if it's, you know, that common phrase or, you know, every girl wants to marry someone like her father. Maybe it's something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But there is something comforting about being with an older person. I don't know about 60 years old and you being 16. Right. Or for shits and giggles, I'd give it a shot. Well, I, you know what? I, I, I tried dating some birds, so, you know, it's... Anything's you know, possible. No, it's okay. you, you go through stuff for the stream. You take it for the team, you know? Yeah. I will take the route with the blue pill. Good call. <laughs> Good call. If he doesn't have a prescription of Cialis, it's just not going to work. Let's be real here. Well, and I will say, I will say, I'm not, <coughs> I don't want to be rude. I think it's great that that is an option. Like, there needs to be more options other than, you know, like, perfect 20-year-old dates perfect 20-year-old. Like, mm -hmm. there needs to be more routes that are different and open and Otome's because there may be someone that, you know picks this up and likes older men and that's fine I think it's good to have options you it, know but personally for me I would I would not go that route if the romanceable route gave me somebody that personified a hybrid of Sean Connery and Morgan Freeman fuck yes I'd give it a shot fuck yes I would I don't know how deep I would get invested into it but that's somebody I totally would want to go on a date with that'd be an interesting date and I think I think it comes with the experience, like just hearing stories and, and, you know, knowing what they witnessed that was possibly before my time. That's interesting. I don't know if I could get down with them per se, but I respect them. I think it would be intriguing very much right. so. I just, I love the athletic routes. I like archers. I like sword masters. If you can, you know, wield ninja stars Nine out of ten times you get my vote. It's actually very funny because even now playing Code Realize, going the Van Helsing route, I didn't think about it. He's probably, uh, you know, the archetype of the, ath the athletic guy. And I was I like, like, I did that by mistake and I did that by accident. But I found myself clinging to the storyline and really appreciating it because he was very much the strong silent type. And I won't go into spoilers, but he is 
very much, he reminds me a lot of Saito in a lot of ways. And I'm excited to see how the route goes with him. I wasn't expecting that that would be the way that I would go on the first go. I honestly thought I would start with Lupin first. But now that I'm giving a shot, I'm like, I can get behind this. Can you start with Saint? Because he's the one I'm going after. You can start with Saint. You can start with Saint Germain. You can start with Impey, uh, Victor Frankenstein, or you can start with Van Helsing. So I want Saint. And they each have such redeemable qualities about them. Just, you know, between Van Helsing and his athleticism, Impey and just his lighthearted sense of humor. Victor is so knowledgeable and yet so considerate and compassionate. And then St. Germain, there's something very alluring about him. And there's Mm -hmm. so little that you know that it kind of just magnetizes you towards him where you're like, I want to get to know you better. I want to get to know you better. And then Lupin is fucking tuxedo mask as far as I'm concerned. I'm like, I just want to hang out with tuxedo mask. I want to love on him. So they, they all have such great qualities. And they shine in a way where they are they're, they shine in their their specialties and in their mm-hmm. strengths and they don't, you know, overshadow others. And I like how the story does that. Very few Otome games in my mind have done that for me properly and I think that they actually did this right. So I was really excited. I'm definitely excited about this game. I'm looking forward to starting it this weekend. That's why I was like I got to push through Amnesia. I got to I got to finish this so I can move on. I'm ready to try a, a different tone of, of a game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it'll, it'll definitely be one that I think you'll enjoy. I'm sure we'll have much to converse about it, but I, I'm very excited that even looking now at what, three years of playing Otomes, I've realized what my type is. So now I know that when I engage in certain Otome games, I know typically what route I'm going to go for, but yeah. if I want to switch things up. I'm going to try something different. And that was, that was what Icky was for me in Amnesia, but that kind of blew up in my face because the premise of the game itself is so dramatically different that you're just like, oh, that doesn't apply here. That doesn't work. And I, I went through the same problem with him. I, and I think we were discussing this on the last episode. I think you're right. I think the order in which they're presented does play a critical role. And I learned that with Shin. And I was like, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> oh, I messed that up. But it is what it is. Um, I'm excited to continue and finish those routes. But I'm ready to yeah. bring that game to the archives. So still great, though. I encourage people to check it out. But definitely, I wouldn't put it on the top of the list for me. I think there's a lot of other games out there that still give it a little more I, shine. I will say that, okay, um, Toma's story is just heartbreaking. Like, his normal ending um, was... I was in tears. Like, I tweeted about it. Like, I was seriously... Sab was out of town. <laughs> I was playing it on the couch. And I got to the end, and I was just like, nobody wins. Everybody loses. This is terrible. How is this normal? Like, this is just, it was the saddest thing. And when I did that route, that's when I realized his the underlining factors of, of him and who he is and his story and it was just very emotional. And I even like, that's when I decided, well, I'm team Toma now. And I'm, I'm, and you know, I'm a Tome trash and, and I own up to that. I'm fine. Oh no, I, okay. I'm accepting of being a Tome trash, but I don't know if Amnesia was a game because the way the game is presented, it couldn't give me an archetype to choose from because I didn't know anything about the guys. And I think for that reason, that's a slight turnoff for me because I had to base it on visual appearance and just literally a number of options. It was so hidden. There are so many, you know, dark spots and dark gaps that it made it very difficult for me to go through this. I, there was no set path where I feel other Ultimate games do give you some sort of a path. Mm-hmm. This one didn't. And I just went... Oh, I, I made so many fuck-ups, and I was really beating myself up on it. And I was like, maybe I'm just not that good at Ultimates. 
which sounds funny, but it's true. And then I realize after the fact, I'm like, no, it's just, this is a different type of oats make. You have to yeah. recognize that when going through. Maybe I'll love Team Toma when I try the good route. I think it'll be the normal route that'll get you. I think it will. If he's extremely sensitive, I don't know if it will. I can't. It's not that. It's not that. Is it just the scenario itself, like the end result that makes it so heartbreaking? Yes. Like, just this. It's. I don't want to spoil it. No, no, but don't. It, we'll it save that just, for something at yeah. a time. But I, I'm curious. I'm definitely curious, and I'll definitely give it a shot. And we will have a, a plum wine pajama party, and we'll just discuss it in pajamas with wine. And it'll be no holds barred. It'll be spoilers galore. So if you don't want to hear about it, it might not be the episode to listen to. But I am curious. I am very curious about it. Because I'm, I'm surprised how quick you change from no Toma to Toma, please. And I went, oh, what? Yeah. yeah, we'll save it for another time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I did also want to bring up another important uh, topic. And this is actually the, the title and the basis for this week's episode. Somebody on Twitter, Gigi Chestnut, she is an awesome, awesome person, very new to the Ultimate community. She had asked about the terminology and the jargon that we use. And I didn't realize that we had this, I guess, language, <laughs> this secret yeah. hidden Ultimate language. And then some people, uh, Zen Buddhists, started yelling, going, yeah, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? And I was like, I guess, it, I, guess I do talk differently when talking about Otome games than I thought. And, and maybe there are some things that people don't really understand what I'm saying. So to any uh, new or even, you know, seasoned veterans within Otome, we definitely just want to give you guys a rundown so you understand that maybe when speaking with somebody who's heavily involved in Otome games or maybe somebody who knows absolutely nothing at all about Otome games, you guys are on the same page and you know what's being discussed. The reason we use a lot of different terms and, and uh, a certain type of jargon is honestly because a lot of the titles to Ultimate Games are super fucking long. Right. <laughs> and sometimes just very difficult to pronounce. And that's the honest truth. So uh, we definitely... <laughs> I'm just watching two people bicker on chat right now. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it. I'm going to just move that over there. <laughs> but uh, what I am going to do is just give you guys just a quick rundown so you understand where we're coming from when we make references to certain things, especially with social media where it's still limited to 140 characters on Twitter. It's easier for us to explain certain things a certain way. Uh, first and foremost, Otome. Um, it's also known as a GXB. The proper term for it is a maiden game, and that's a visual novel game targeted towards the female market. This can be related towards love sims, dating sims, or even just girl female protagonist stories. It's just, it's targeted towards a female audience. And that's, uh, it's easily recognizable. You can usually see it on just who the player is hosted as and what options are presented to her, what people are presented to her. So if you see that, nine out of 10 times, you can figure out an Otome. Um, is there a male version? This is actually a question I've been seeing a lot these last two weeks. And let me tell you, yes, there is a male version. And that male version is known as Bishoujo, which is BXG. Um, this is also known as a gal game, gal gay, whatever you see fit. And it's a visual novel centered on interactions with attractive females. Uh, essentially, again, it's the male equivalent of an ultimate. I will, I will interject that from what I have seen, do not, they are still different. They, it, they are the same, but they are different in different aspects. So. Yes. Uh, are you referring to like maybe what the storyline or the plot's about or... How you choose um, to romance them, or yes, okay, um, yes. So if you have played um, any other Atome game, um, and you go into a gal game, um, it won't 
it won't be the same experience. It's the same idea, mm -hmm. but the experience will be very different. And yeah. that's all I'm to say. No, I, I, think that's, <laughs> I think that's right. And I'm seeing so much pop into chat. Is there a male version? Yes, it's called porn. Actually, segue, it's actually called eroge. And it's uh, also known as H-Game, Hentai Game. It's a Japanese video game with strong, very strong, extremely strong sexual content. Um, Oroges and Bishoujos are actually different. And you could see it by how the plot or storyline is developed. Um, with your interactions with whatever female you should choose, it's a little different. It's, it's, there, there are broad differences between the two. Iroge, you cannot miss. You cannot risk. And Iroge isn't just a male bishoujo games. It, it does apply to otomes too. Otomes do have Iroge in ways unimaginable. But Iroge in and of itself basically is just defined as a very strong sexually graphic visual novel game. So if you see Iroge and you want to go down that road, who am I to stop you? Come join us in a Tome trash. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and, and visual novels as well, just a quick note for you guys, it's sometimes quickly abbreviated as VN. So if you see someone, you know, making reference to VNs, it's a visual novel. So uh, Dojin is another one that I was actually asked about. Um, I do want to point that out. It's a Japanese translation of small or amateur, amateur? Yes. Predominantly, it references smaller companies and developers as opposed to AAA companies. So in Otome, of course, they are not developed or published by BioWare or by EA or Square Enix or anything like that. They, they, their big AAA companies are predominantly what? Otomate, um, mm -hmm. Idea Factory, Axis is a big one. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that I'm missing right now. And I'm sure one's completely escaping my mind. But those are actually more of the AAA titles within the Atome genre. Dojin uh, is a smaller one and has a, a bit of a, a niche demographic, but it still has a good following. Type Moon is probably the best example that I could think of. When I think of uh, a Dojin and you know, a popular visual novel. I think of Tsukihime. That's the first one that comes to mind. And from Tsukihime, it's expanded in so many different directions, which coincidentally, we'll discuss that later. So if you do hear a doujin iroge, it's smaller. It's, it could be considered indie or it just could be a smaller title company, but that's just kind of the differentiations that they make within uh, Japanese business and culture. And then finally, paths and routes. You probably hear me and uh, Sushi talk about this all the time, going, well, this path and that path and this route and that route. Uh, upon choosing a male or female character to romance, whether you're playing an otome or a bishoujo, the progression, the progression, I cannot talk tonight, the progression of the game, damn you, Mermaid Pilsner, uh, is specifically with that character their route or their path. This phrase is also coined to aid the process of writing up guides. Uh, another uh, explanation of that is basically a walkthrough. Uh, that's another term that a lot of guide writers uh, make reference to. When you are playing a certain character, you are going down their road. Certain choices that you make will affect the end result or the outcome. And if you want to keep track of that to use as a guide, we do refer to them as routes. It's just an easier way of explaining it rather than sometimes using walkthrough. I'm, I mean, it can be different phrases. I know some people call them strictly guides or some call them strictly paths and some call them strictly routes. It's a matter of preference, but yeah. they essentially both mean the same exact thing. Um, and if you ever want to Google one for a Japanese game, you have to put in the Japanese word for cheats. Mm -hmm. It's actually so. Um, I found that out, thankfully, so I could <laughs> find some stuff. But yeah, so and a lot of um, so what Pete's talking about with the routes and everything, you'll hear us also talking about the endings, 
And we talked about, you know, in amnesia, there's normal, good, bad. So every, typically there's various different endings that you can get based upon the choices that you make. Um, in most bigger name games, you have bad, normal, and good. Um, in mobile games, mobile Tome games, you'll probably get like super happy, awesome ending, and then sweet ending. One may be a bit more uh, erotic in a way than another, um, but in mobile games, I don't think I've ever come across a bad ending. Well, um, mobile Atomes are more microtransaction based, yeah. so I think because you're paying X amount of dollars rather than paying one lump sum for the game as a whole, I think that's why they change it so that they kind of omit the bad ending option, and a lot of indie developers seem to do it too, and I think it's just yeah. to attract the game, which makes sense. But there are some games that have come to mobile that do have a bad ending. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, if they are mobile only, you don't really have to worry about a bad ending. Um, so, And you'll also hear us talk about um, Protag. Um, that's the heroine. Um, that's the main character. Um, that's who you usually play as, um, in the BXG versions, it's shortened to, or switched to hero. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to answer Sam's question. I just saw that too. Are routes commonly just a choice in the Tomes? Because I've played non-Atome games where the chosen route is more organic based on choices in the prologue. Most Atome games, you pick the guy that you're going to go with. Mm -hmm. um, however, and if I remember correctly, in Hakuoki, you do not. Um, you don't pick the guy. It's totally based upon your decisions while playing the game, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but in most of them, yes, you go through, much like Pizza was talking about tonight, here's a prologue, here are the, the characters, and you even have, like, character information um, a lot of times so you know kind of their personality what they like what they're into um, and then you usually decide based upon that now in amnesia you didn't know any of that you just chose a world um, I will also say too within code realize the way it's presented from the prologue to chapter one as well uh, the, the choices of the route that you choose to take isn't necessarily presented to you straightforward where it gives you even the personality or a brief description of the character. It's asking you as a choice, who do you want to go with? Do you want to do this with this person? Do you want to do this with that person? It can be presented to you that way as well where there is no description. It's kind of just intertwined into the story and that's how it develops from there and you just right. have to keep making choices towards that route or ending. There's different ways that Ultimate Games will go about it. It's just, it's the choice of the developer, really. Yeah. Um, and Corgi's right. It is that in mobiles, it's more in mobiles where you pick the route. And that's kind of where my mind was coming from. So, mm. But yeah, um, that's where you get a lot more information on the background of the characters, is in the mobile games. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, Another term that you might hear is called a blind run. Um, it's kind of a new term, but it is what it sounds like. Um, you're going through for the first time with no with no guide. Um, those are those are really fun to do, but you could reach a point much like I know you have with amnesia, and I have trying to get the last few bad routes. I just mm -hmm. really wanted to get through it. And move on. So, but um, blind runs are really fun to do. Yeah. Um, the next one is a term that is near and dear to my heart. Um, and <coughs> for me, you correct me if I'm wrong in chat because I couldn't really find. I'm kind of new to drama CDs, but I love them dearly. And basically, drama CDs are a CD. This is um, the one I got with Sweet School Life. And they usually come in, like, the collector's edition sometimes, but you can order, like, character CDs separately. Um, and they're just an extension of stories just on a CD in oral form. You just listen to them. They have the same voice acting. 
uh, voice actors. Um, and they're usually fun. Um, I will put a disclaimer on this. You kind of have to for ketchup time. <laughs> because there are uh, drama CDs that are 18 plus. And um, those are really interesting. There is a great um, illustration that if you Google, and I sh sorry, Smashy, I should have had you do this before, but if you Google Atome drama CDs um, and look in the images, let's not talk about the web search yet. Let's talk about images and type in Hakuoki. There's a great illustration of what happens the very first time you listen to a drama CD. And I remember this day vividly. I was home from work. I, was, I think I was working from home. I think you were. You um, were. The um, I think I was waiting for Lion's Arch to explode um, in Guild Wars 2, but I don't remember. But I was sitting at home, and I was like, I want to look up, you know, that's it. Thank you, Smashy. Um, perfect moderator. Um, and... So now for the web, and don't link this, Smashy. If people want it, they have to, like, yeah. find it. It's it's bad. It's not a legitimate um, – it's a fan-made I'm, I'm going with. And um, if you Google that uh, Hakuoki drama CD, it is on SoundCloud, and it is the most terrifying thing that you have ever heard in your entire life. And um, – it will have you just like that illustration. It will have you, your nose will be gushing. You will be giggling uncontrollably. It saved pizza's life on the streets in New York. <laughs> Draw CDs save. So I'm warning you, it is Don't. terribly awkward. Don't listen to it at work. Earphones, earmuffs, mm. everything possible. Well, no, I will say this. Don't wear it when you're getting out of the subway and walking home. And if a man should approach you asking you for money for a subway card and you pop out one earbud and he hears what I like to affectionately call ketchup time because of the noises being made, said person will never bother you ever again because they have an idea of what you're listening to, but they have also no idea what's going on and you just quietly put it back in your ear, and you go about your business going home. Uh, no, Seb, I'm not sharing it from the headset. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we would actually lose this channel if we put that on the air. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. But we, we, we encourage you to explore for yourself. And please don't do it on a work computer or a public computer. Try it on a private computer is yeah. all I have to say. But I will say that drama CDs are another way that you can also support Otome because a lot of Otome games have drama CDs. Mm -hmm. They also have music CDs, mm -hmm. um, which are just as great. You can learn which of your favorite voice actors has a terrible singing voice mm -hmm. <laughs> that way. Um, just because you can act doesn't mean you can sing. Yep. And um, they're really kind of fun. Um, I have the Sweet School Live. You can find translations. There are beautiful people on the internet that translate the drama CDs for you, um, even the 18 plus ones. Yeah. And um, it's just a good way to support it and immerse yourself in it um, and just have, you know, fun. Um, I have the Sweet School Life on my phone. And, you know, um, when I was walking into the office from the elevator, I kind of had a long ride up. I would just pop it in my ear and, you know, just kind of have, have a good time. Um, but as Kat will tell you, I like um, ear porn. So it's very <laughs> nice. I will also say if you are somebody who, um, and this is another great point about drama CDs, they are great for collectors of certain titles and IPs. Um, I think it's one of the greatest additions to include into it. I think it's a very different and innovative way to kind of engage people to purchase more of the product aside from, you know, maybe the body pillows, um, stuffed animals, maybe jewelry, what have you. It's great to have for a collection. So if you see that there is a certain game or title that you absolutely love, whether it be Hakuoki, Amnesia, Starry Sky, whatever, 
definitely more likely than not they have a drama CD for them. Go pick them up and, you know, just add them to your collection if you're that type. I'm so. still waiting on my Troy Baker drama CD. Oh, really? <laughs> How long I has want, it been now? I want Logan Thackeray drama CD and I want a Kanji drama CD. I want it. Have you not put this in? Plus. Have you not put this in the Guild War II forums yet? I want my Logan Thackeray CD. <laughs> it's about to blow. You're like, oh yeah, it is. But yeah, that's just one more thing I wish that um, we had over here because we um, we do have a lot of great voice acting, and I mm -hmm. wish that um, we had other ways to keep that going. You know, and okay. Sab, stop. So, <laughs> if you play Guild Wars 2, this is not a Tome talk. This is an MMO chat real quick. If you play Guild Wars 2, um, stop it, Sab. It's a great game. but And Logan Thackeray is a really hot guy in it. But every time hair. he comes into the screen, his tabard blows out in front of his crotch. So we call him Tabard Crotch. And one of his lines, like, you get injured, and he comes out, and he goes, mmm, that looks nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Thackeray is a CG, guys. You just don't know it yet. He is a romanceable option. Isn't he? Or maybe one day? No, he's he's sworn to the queen. Oh, he I'll swear him her. to something else. Give me time. Give me time. <laughs> Give me time. So, okay, so I'm sorry I get... I, I get in love with drama CDs, so um, I'll, I will transition. Actually, can I ask you one quick question before yeah. we transition? Your drama CDs, I know that they've been available, I believe, Yes Asia, CD Baby. Um, CD Japan. CD Japan, thank you. And, and Amazon. Oh, Amazon's the other one? Because I was wondering if Alibaba, like there are places that are accessible to get them on import into the States. I just wanted to kind of highlight those just so if people were interested, these are the places that they could check. Yeah. Um, I usually go to Amazon first, but I think CD Japan, definitely. Um, and maybe even, I don't know if J list would have it. J well, maybe because J list does have some of the games that I didn't even think would ever come stateside. Uh, yes. Yeah. Asia, I think might be another option. And sometimes, very rarely. I don't like to shop there often. Alibaba, if you check it out, you might find something there too. But I was just curious about that. I was curious where you got yours. Oh, Ami Ami is another good one too. That is Thanks, right. Thanks, Ami Ami is a good one. I have, I've picked up a couple of Nendroids through Ami Ami. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But what is the next term? Oh, guides. Uh, guides. So um, it kind of... We kind of talked about before with the routes. A guide is just a guide to help you get through the routes. So if you are reaching a brick wall and maybe you just can't get, you know, the ending that you want or you need to unlock that one extra CD, CG, you can easily just, you know, plug it in, hit the fast forward button and go through and just drop in based upon the routes. Um, I like doing... Um, guides I have a fun time doing them um I find them really helpful so but um you don't have to follow them but sometimes you may get to a point where you're like uh, I'm done <laughs> <laughs> I have to get I have to I have to move on from this so um the next one Sab asked about in chat is called a CG and um it's short for computer generated so um that's usually when you know it doesn't mean you're doing well in the story. Some sto some Atome games, it does mean you're on the right path. But in a lot of them, you do get CGs on the normal route and bad route. So it's not necessarily a guarantee. Um, but um, all CGs are usually saved in the gallery because that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't like to post CGs because they have spoilers. Um Certain companies may not want you to post them, but um, CGs are a huge, huge part of Atome games, and it's nice that they are just all saved right there, so you can constantly reference them and enjoy the artwork that people put, you know, a lot of time and energy into. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one I think we're going to go over is localization, 
And that just means you're bringing a game over here, translating it, localizing it. Um, and it can be, it, it's a tricky thing and it's not easy. It's not cheap. Um, and it, it doesn't just mean to the NA. I just should clarify that. It localized Asian, you know, anywhere. But um, it's it's a topic that we want to talk about at some point, but it's a beast of a topic. It's a very broad subject, I think, to bring about because there's, there's so many games that do have poor localization and some of it is purely based of because monetary reasons and then other times it's just they did a poor job on their part. Localization right. isn't just limited to Atome games. Any game that is hailing from another country coming over here has localization to some degree. And again, a lot of the bigger game companies with bigger budgets have better localization. I think with the likes of Idea Factory and Axis, I think they do a really good job about their localization, uh, given a, a few exceptions. But it, it's nice to see that it's a... Uh, a fair assessment so that we can understand the story of the game and see it in the same eyes as those that get to see it and witness it in Japan. So, yeah. So, but I think, um, I think that's all we had, but if you guys, um, have anything else you want us to talk about, we're going to be around for longer. So just drop it in chat and we'll try and explain it. There may be something that we're totally obviously looking over because, we use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It becomes such casual conversation. And I feel very bad, too. I try to explain myself as best as I can because I don't want somebody to feel like I'm trying to shut them out from the conversation just because they don't necessarily understand what me and another person are discussing. I try to explain it. It's just a little harder sometimes to do on social media if you're limited to a certain number of characters. Localization, you're right, Simodian. Localization is not the same as translation, but it's trying to make things relevant to the respective country that it's being published in or it's being, it's being sent to. So um, this was a good example. Sometimes they change something from a local food to Japan to a local food in NA. That is a way of localization. So yeah, exactly. I mean, Smashy is kind of hitting the nail of the head on that. It, it may not always necessarily be the translation, but it's making it so that it's the story can similarly be followed from its native country. That's an important thing to know about localization. So. Do you want to talk about the new releases? Yes, I do want to talk about the new releases. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make that point because I saw that. No, I was that's like, fine. no, I want to draw that point. Um, this week in news and releases, Actually, Simodian head up brought this to my attention. Melty Blood is coming to Steam North America in 2016. Uh, if you are familiar with the Melty Blood franchise, I think it's Melty Blood 3. I don't remember if it's Melty Blood 3 or if it's just Melty Blood, but we're going to see that. I'm pretty excited about it because it has, um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation, Hisui, uh, which is one of these cute, cute, set of twins well it's one in a set of twins and she wears a very cute maid suit they're actually introducing Mekusue and she's very popular from the Tsukihime franchise this is not visual novel related or Otome related at all but I was really excited about a fighting game with a beautiful robot maid so I wanted to make note of that so right. <laughs> I have magic cards all over my desk I'm not ready to link what are you doing over there smashy uh, be on the lookout for that, though. When in 2016? I don't recall when, but we should be seeing that state side soon. So that should be really exciting. So be sure to check that out, you guys. Uh, as well, NTT Solmare is teasing a new route in Castle Break for Noah and Renove. Ronovi. Uh, I'm not quite familiar with Castle Break. I've actually heard a lot of people talk about this game. It's another mobile Tome. I think it's based off of microtransactions as well. If you're interested and you want to see what the storyline is about, go check that out. Uh, which one was this one? Twilight Romance is on the iOS and Android by Genius LLC. There are four vampires you can romance. Yes, this is a sexy vampire game. Um, and we'll have the links provided for you guys on that one. 
And Sushi, I'm going to have you take this next one because I don't want to announce this at all. So for all you lovely bird lovers out there that I know exist, um, Hats of Fool Boyfriend, Holiday Star, is coming home for Christmas. And um, yeah, so it's a Christmas route. So, you know, you can see what Christmas is like with a pigeon. And um, Will it be pigeons, though? Or will it be turtle doves for the holiday theme? I have no... <laughs> I'm actually legitimately curious about that. I'm like, is it really going to be pigeons still? Or are they going to change the, the species of bird? Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Because knowing the true ending of that game, I really don't know. <laughs> Did you actually keep playing it at all recently or no? No, I didn't stream this week, so... Gotcha. Um, I do, I do want to get the true ending, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure how the holiday star is going to, it's going to work out for everyone, <laughs> whatever, go get it, guys, go have at it if you love your birds. Oh, pigeons, I don't understand. I witnessed, uh, had a full boyfriend, uh, currently on my work commute a few days ago. I decided to take pictures of it. I saw some I saw interesting that. happenings. So I was like, Wow. Had a full boyfriend, and I get to witness it for free. All about that. I am actually excited about this. Thanks to the glory that is Google Translate, where they will translate an entire web page for you, the new anime series in the Hakuoki franchise is titled Hakuoki Fairy Tale Book, and it'll be in broadcasting in Japan, and I believe they said it was on three broadcasting networks or three broadcasting channels, I don't know which one, uh, in April of 2016. They also just rolled out a new website promoting the show to be available. So we'll have those two links for you. It's going to be the same characters, the same original cast, but it will be a different story. I'm super excited about this. I don't know about you. I'm curious to see how they pull this off because I enjoyed what they did with Sweet, Sweet School Life. So I'm curious as to how Fairy Tale Book is going to go. Yeah. So is it going to come stateside, though? I don't. Do you think it is? I don't know. So right before we went to the pre-show tonight, I retweeted um, uh, oh, our um, RPG site. And they, if you like a lot of RPGs, I would encourage you to follow them. But mm -hmm. they were at um, that event in San Francisco. Um, and they were meeting with Idea Factory and they wanted to know questions we wanted to ask. So I instantly tweeted, I was like, ask about Atome, ask about Atome. And I didn't hear anything. Well, apparently they did ask oh. about Atome. And, um, it's not a lot that they address, but they said that they do see that there is an audience and they're looking at bringing more and they did drop the name Hakuoki. Um, but they also did mention as well that they know they have a huge array of titles that they can bring over. So um, it may be something to, I mean, they know they have the audience. It could be a good way to test to see the interest. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, we definitely don't have as much Hakuoki merchandise over here that is available in the rest of the world. Um, so I I really don't know. I mean, a lot of a lot of um, Atome games are getting anime series, and they have had for a while. And I think that that was a subject that we may save for another podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so there is, I mean, there's a fan base here. It's a popular game. It's a popular anime already. I don't I don't see why not. I think it's very plausible to happen. I think it's likely to happen. I mean, I think. The one thing you have to be concerned with, and I, I noticed this with just not in Otome's, but just anything Japan related coming over, licensing issues are a bitch. And I think it's for that reason we haven't seen more come over stateside. I think they are recognizing that the fan base is growing and that the community mm -hmm. is there. But I think it's just more companies willing to license out their IP to come over stateside. I think that's I think that's the hurdle we're currently going through right now. And I think that's why Hakuoki is a big name, but still, even with merchandising, we're not going to see it come stateside right away. It's yeah. just the kind of like, you know, if we have that special snowflake, like we're limited to having this, it'll 
give it more of a, a novelty. It'll, it'll make it a little more exclusive. I guess exclusivity is the word I was looking for. So maybe you'll see that soon in due time, hopefully. Right. In due time. And uh, the last one that was brought to my attention from Voltage, uh, Starcross Myth just recently introduced a new route for, I've been trying to pronounce this name for at least 15 minutes prior to the show. Cause I know what it actually is supposed to be, but they try to be creative with their writing. Taurus? Taurus? Anyway, it's sure. the the Taurus base constellation. His new route has been introduced in Starcross Myth. If you guys are fans of uh, the Voltage franchise, definitely go check it out. Uh, it looks pretty good. I actually like a lot of astrology uh, and astronomy based stuff. I'm just not a huge Voltage game fan myself, but maybe I'll go check it out. I have a lot of free time during the holiday break, so we'll see in due time. You'll be playing that code realize. That code realize is going to consume my life. Consume it. And I'm okay with that. I just want right. the tuxedo mask CDs. That's all I want. I want <laughs> the mask. I want the top hat. He even has the cape. I'm like, yeah. Like, he's he's coming for you. He'll be there. He's already here. He's already here. He's right here in my heart. <laughs> Simodian is also coincidentally in my heart right but for sure Lupin is definitely there with him he is he is he's occupying the living room while Simodian is in the master bedroom so it's it's great of my heart I want to preface of my heart but um yeah that is actually the show that we have for this week we do want to encourage you guys if you have any questions feedback, comments of what you guys would like to see on the show, please let us know on our social media sites. If you actually check on the profile of our page, there are ways that you can reach us, whether they be on Twitter or on Twitch. Um, as well, you can also check out all the available links as to where you can find us. We will be on YouTube, and we're also on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. So be sure to check it all out. And they should upload within the next day or two. So... So... I have to address um, Sam's little thing there. Lupin in the streets, Samo Chan in the sheets. Actually, that's one thing I loved in Hakuoki Sano's route was, um, oh gosh, what was it? Oh, Samurai, Ronin in the streets, Samurai in the, sh in the sheets. I think that was the title of his route. And I saw that, and I was like, this is too adorable. Like, <laughs> this is just too, too adorable. You know what? Sano actually had some great fucking CGs. I remember enjoying oh them God. thoroughly. And I was like, what? I just, I think I like the, the dark elusiveness of Saito. That's kind of what drew me to him. And I like that he had the side ponytail with the, with the scarf. But. Yeah. Sano had some really good CGs. I need to play through Hakuoki. I'm going to be playing through so many games in these next two weeks. I'm going to be unreachable. Oh, you can reach me, Sushi. Nobody else can. Because I'll probably be commenting, going, look what I got. Look what I got. Again. <laughs> yeah. So. Samurai in the streets, Ronin in the sheets. I. Well, no, because. They're yeah. mutually exclusive. They're yeah. mutually exclusive. I, I can't remember what it was exactly, but it, it was like that. And I got it. And I was like, this is just, it was the most adorable title that I had ever seen <laughs> for a route. So uh, it's one of my favorites. I'm trying to actually remember favorite titles to routes. And right now, none come to mind off the top of my head, but. I just remember the actual characters. And because of it, it's almost like I've formed this, like, harem-like household of just my favorite husbandos from different games. Saito's definitely in mine. Lupin is soon making his way in. Kagura's in there currently. Shizun's in there. There's a couple to choose from. Right. I don't know how many I have. Does it mean anything if you have more than others, like... 20 to 40, does that say anything positive or negative? I don't know. No, no, it's just um, more to love. So That's more. All. I just have a bigger heart to give to all these. Right? All it's these totally fine. People. It's totally fine. So, but I think 
that'll be it for this week's episode. We will be back next week, next Friday. Be sure to tune in at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll be in a different location. Uh, I will be in Pennsylvania. But it'll actually be nice. You probably won't be able to hear the car sirens going through the streets of New York, which is a pain in the ass to try to mute out. So I apologize for that. But hopefully. I'll still be in the cage. You <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm going to dress up one show. I'm going to dress up and I'll just. <laughs> if you were to dress up in the lowly outfit with the cage. I would actually legitimately die. I would legitimately <laughs> die of happiness because I would probably get a nosebleed because it would probably look adorable. And two, no. I would die. No, but... <laughs> Back in the cage. <laughs> oh, my God. Sam, I'm so glad you're taking this in stride. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really interesting. I think we talked about this, and I'd be curious to see if you guys would be interested if we featured our SOs um, and maybe um, let you guys submit questions to them. We could ask each other questions. And mm -hmm. I'd be curious if you guys would be into that. I don't know. Sav might be – we might have to put, like, a picture of, like, Marie from Persona 4 as him. He's a little shy. But um, – That's okay. That's, and that's perfectly fine. We want them to be in their comfort zone. Do you actually – this is a good question. Do you have people actually ask you about what Sab thinks of you and Sexy Vampire Boy? Because I get that quite often with Simodian. And I can only say that it honestly comes in jest. It really does. He's, he's supportive about it. So much so that he's, he's played some. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I mean, I do get that question. And um, Sab is great. Um, Sab, you know, I think that that, he just, much like, you know, Sam, I, I think they just want us to be happy and this mm -hmm. makes us happy. And, you know, but I do, people are like, well, you know, how does, how does your husband feel about this? And I'm like, what is that business of yours? You know, like he's fine with it. <laughs> like, I mean, we're good, you know, um, but it, it does, people get a little weirded out by it or I don't know. I, I have a tendency to troll when they ask me questions pertaining to my personal relationship. They're like, well, how does this affect your actual love life with your significant other? I go, well, he actually has a bamboo sword now. Um, every now and then, you could only imagine where that bamboo sword goes. So <laughs> that's a thing for us. I'm like, really? I'm like, no, it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it obviously doesn't affect us because... He is not a 2D sexy vampire boy. He is him. I fell in love with him. I try to yeah. I try to be as kind as possible about it, but when it does come up, I'm very private about my personal life, especially with regards to him. So I try to be as cordial about it, but sometimes it's just a little too much and I just have to troll people. I'm like, well, he has a samurai outfit. He has a vampire outfit. We're working on a steampunk outfit next. It'll be a good look for him. And, and of I have course, to say, yeah. I'm, like, really happy because I've noticed more on my Twitter the ladies that I follow that are playing Atome games, their husbands and SOs are getting more involved with Atome games and actually mm -hmm. picking them up and um, treating them as, as a fun experience. And I, I really like that. Sav will listen to me talk about my routes and be uncomfortable or upset Mm -hmm. Or he'll cry, and he'll be like, "Okay, whatever you need, babe. Whatever you need." So, um, I mean, he, I think he may know their names. I think I, I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'll just be like, "Oh man, I'm doing this one guy's route, and he's he's just a total dick, and I don't know what to do, and I just I hate him. I need some wine." And he's like, "Okay, here you go. You know? That's why I'm here." Uh -huh. <laughs> I usually, I like to have, in the evenings, I, I call it pillow talk, which is just before we go to bed, me and Simodian will chat because currently we're long distance at the moment. Won't be that way for long, but at the current moment, that's how our situation is. And so if I talk to him about certain routes or certain games, or I ask for his perspective on like articles that I've read 
or things that I've posted online. He'll be very forward and honest with me about his opinion. And it's nice to get a third person's opinion, especially that of the opposite gender, because you know that it's unbiased and it's completely objective, which I absolutely love. He doesn't really joke with me all that much about my routes. Like if he sees that I'm legitimately affected by the way an ending wound up or the way a certain route developed, He's actually really supportive about it. He's like, that sucks. Like, what do you think what do you think happened? Or what do you what do you think you should do? Or even when he's gone through certain routes in amnesia, he's like, How did I fuck this up? I tried, you know, all these other different choices and options. I'm right. like, he might have to replay all the way through. He's like, I didn't want that to happen. Like, that sucks, but I'll give it a shot. And he gets invested into it, which is super awesome. Even though he's obviously not for the romance of certain games, and I'm not expecting him to. But I like that. He's supportive of those things in his own kind of way. So, so. I will say that um, Persona 3 um, is a game that Sav and I treasure dearly. And it's probably one of our... It's I know it's my favorite game. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, he started Persona 3 Portable as the female character. Mm-hmm. And when he found out that you can romance and he started to meet all the female characters in the game he was like I think I want to play this as the guy he got so attached to Fuka and Agus like just really so attached like he and oh god I hope he doesn't get mad I'm revealing his secrets <laughs> and he's a Gemini, so he doesn't like that but um he was just Agus's route really got to him and like we would that's our pillow talk like when Sab was out of town I'm like come home and let's talk persona because we need to just let's talk persona three let's talk persona four let, let, let's just let's just talk and when he describes what happened with Agus he just really he's blushing <laughs> he really it really got to him mm-hmm. like on an emotional level and um so I think that helps him kind of relate to me because he has played a very emotional, emotionally charged, you know, love sim with, you know, RPG, um, you know, so, and, and I think that's cute. And he loves, have you played Persona 3? I have played Persona 3. I have not finished it. I have played Persona 2. Uh-huh. And I, 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 I caught, I caught the tail end of it and I actually didn't play it all the way through because I saw who I was fighting and I was like really yeah Re- yep. are you are you fucking serious I know yeah. that Sam enjoys Persona though I know that he enjoys it and he also enjoys and I apologize if I fuck up the name of this Danganronpa 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 yeah. I actually when he when he mailed me the PS Vita the game was on there and I was like oh, I'll just try it out until I buy a game it's a lot of fun yeah I enjoyed it, it a lot and I was like yeah and I made sure I you know, had a new save for me, so I didn't mess with his. I was like, Good this job. is cool. Yeah, I was I was a respectful girlfriend about that. You don't fuck with the man's saves. Um, so, so, like, yeah. Um, okay, so in Persona 3, Sav's two favorites are uh, Fuka mm-hmm. and Agus. And Fuka has this moment where, like, they have little clip scenes that you unlock throughout the game. And there's one with Akihiko that's adorable where he's in his room and he's trying to, like, find a way to pick up girls. And it's this great joke where he's like, hey, uh, you want to meet at the meat bowl place? (laughs) And he's like, God, I'm stupid. Like, he just knows he's terrible. But there's this one where Fuka, they're getting ready to go to the beach. And Fuka's trying to exercise. She... And she's a computer nerd girl. Mm-hmm. And so she gets one of those machines that you hook up and like tur- it electrifies your muscles. And so it starts to tickle her. And all you hear is this vibration sound and her giggling. And Mitsuru comes to the door and she's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm coming, senpai. Oh my God, I'm coming. And Sab was like, like just like, <laughs> I love that game. I would love to see both of them play a romantic 
BXG just to see their reactions to the way girls respond to them, to see if they'll blush when they look at certain CGs. If I could find the right one that's available in English, I would pick it up for Sam and be like, Sam, just try this. Because Katawa Shoujo doesn't count. I'm sorry, Katawa Shoujo does not fucking count. There is nothing romancing or romanceable or sweet. I mean, yeah, equal oppor it's an equal opportunity game. I get that, but I'm like, no, that's, the premise of that game was not as a love sim. Let's be real with ourselves here. I, I need to find one, but I don't know which one, so. Yeah, and I have to say for Persona 4, uh, Yukiko is not best girl. Sorry, Sam. Sorry. Um, just not happening. I know Pizza and I differ on our best girls, but I respect, I respect her best girl. Um, but, and Rize is best girl for me. However, I do ship you and, and Yosuke. And maybe some kanji in there. Chie. So. Chie is where it's at. <laughs> Chie don't get enough love. And I don't she know. Doesn't. She doesn't. She just does not get. She is my little underdog. I love her because she, clearly she is she is walking to the beat of her own different drum. I love Chie. I support Chie. Have you played Persona 4 Dancing All Night? No, I have not. I want to pick that up. But I actually have to pick up a memory card to be able to play that one because I'm limited to the games that I'm playing right now. I have uh, Danganronpa, Code Realize, and Tenkenki Bunko Fighting Climax on the current memory card. I have to get a bigger size in order to get that. But when I she, do get it, it's going to be awesome. She has one of the best songs in that game. Like, oh. seriously. Like, it's, it, it's amazing. And yes, when I play... Persona 4 dancing all night. I every chance I can put you and Yosuke together, they are together and they're in their bathing suits. Go screw you guys. This is my dream. They're partners and I love them and they're adorable together. The one true Absolutely. pairing. The one true pairing. And Sav is right. Chie's saying in Persona 4 uh, dancing all night, she'll go going great and it's so adorable it's adorable but yeah I cannot wait to play that's one that I have to hold on playing for at least like a week or two because I have this very bad habit about rhythm games like my completionist OCD in Oats Maze is bad but in rhythm games it's worse I have to finish every song on easy oh, yeah. level and then finish every song on normal then extreme like there's I have if if I break out of that sink, I will lose my mind. I have to play everything on its, you know, respected level before moving on. There's no, there's no way around it. So if I do play that, then for sure, I'm going to be at that for a couple of weeks, which means I won't have much to talk about on the Otome podcast. So <laughs> no, I priority. Mean, when it came out, like we got, I think you may be able to see it behind me. Uh, we instantly got the collector's edition mm -hmm. and I think I played it straight for like a month like <laughs> it is just so like I could tell when I put it down my skills would just disappear but it's so great and they said if they sold enough copies they would make a persona 3 dancing all night which really? would be like I I would I would rough somebody up for that shit like I would seriously cut somebody <laughs> now I do have a question though with regards to uh current persona dancing all night can you play teddy He's in it. He is in it? Okay. Yep. And you can dress him up. You can buy outfits. Wait, is it costume Teddy or is it human Teddy? Because I, I have a sick, both. sick love. Oh. He does both. And so I think he starts as costume Teddy, but in certain songs he comes out as, real, as, as his human form. And he's adorable. Oh, and he, so his persona, spoiler guys, his persona's a DJ. It's so cute. He has a turntable and everything. It's so adorable. So my birthday's coming up in May. <laughs> May 19th to be exact. I can actually tell you what day that lands on. I'm just... I'm making a note. May, May 19th. May 19th yeah. of 2016. That actually happens to be, by coincidence... Oh, it's a Thursday. We like Thursdays. 
People right. may go drinking on Thursday. I personally choose to play video games on Thursday. <laughs> I just want to put that out there to everybody. DJ Teddy. Watch you get like 10 copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck, what do I do with all these copies? I would actually love a plush Teddy. If I had a plush Teddy, no one would sleep in my bed. It would just I be me the, and Teddy. I um, have blow-up one that came with Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Ultimax that you can hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not a plushie. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Actually, I think we need to do this on post-show. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I apologize, guys. I got excited about this. We're going to keep discussing this. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Episode 3. We are actually wrapping this up. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, be sure to go check back into the archives, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Additionally, also check this out on iTunes, Stitcher, as well as SoundCloud. I have been your host for the evening. I am Pizza Maid. Oh, I'm Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hi. all good. And uh, and we will we will see you all next Friday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Bye. Bye.